Many a long year ago now, on this city's former site, though abundant grass grew freely, by no bindies were it light. No punch bowl, Gassi, no Fuji, Engadi, no San Susi. No Yaguna yet existed Where one day Sydney would be Bugger if I know. First thing we're driving in your Uber down New South Head Road. To the wanker inner city history club. Wanker. Yeah. Look, just one question there, Kira. That's what the app says your name is. Is it Kira? Yes, it is Billy, if that is your real name. Kira. Billy. Kira. Billy, what's your question? What are we doing out here in the bush? I don't recognise anything. I wouldn't be so sure about that. What do you reckon about that? Sandstone outcrop over there. Oh yeah. Kind of looks like South Head. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But if that's South Head, where's the water? I know. Of course. You want to share with the rest of the Trocadero? Keep up, everyone. <laughs> well, you know when I put my car in reverse, I think I must have hit the time button. These new cars have everything. <laughs> I should probably read the manual. Are you suggesting that we've gone back in time? Yeah, it looks like uh, 10,000 years to the end of the last ice age. It's a high undine, not a DeLorean. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it a fastback. Well, only if they drive like you, you red head. Yeah. Hang on, how does that explain why Sydney Harbour's dry? Well, 10,000 years ago, the sea level was way lower. So this is Sydney back then. This isn't Sydney. We're standing here overlooking Port Jackson, where Port Jackson sharks and manly fairies will one day be cruising around. You can't get much more Sydney than that, mate. No, but it isn't Sydney. It has to be. No, it isn't Sydney. Yes. He's such a pedantic dickhead. <laughs> it's an important difference. People have been living here for at least 48,000 years. In relative terms, Sydney popped up five minutes ago. As recently as, say, West Connect. Yeah, and it would have been just about as welcome as far as the locals were concerned. <laughs> anyway, all the water that was in the harbour and all that was in the Parramatta River, is, which is just a tiny creek over there now, is way out that way. So everywhere is further from the beach? Yeah. Everywhere is further from the beach. <laughs> At D.Y. the surf is well and truly out of reach No ocean view from Barron Jolly Can't ride a gnarly swell as manly Bill Bowler's the old Barara Mona Vale's the old Waitara Collaroy's the old Kalara Matraville's the old Veranda Yes, everywhere is further from the beach Suburbia has undergone a monumental switch. Manly is the old North Sydney. South Sydney's the old Canterbury. Parramatta's the old Penrith. Man, that would really mess with the NRL teams. <laughs> it's funny you should say that, because I have a theory that a, uh, rugby league was invented by the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. <sighs> That is such a bogan idea. <laughs> That's not a theory, it's revisionist history. And I would expect that from a latte sipping snob like you. Hey. I know it sounds unlikely. Yeah. But consider the tantalising bits of evidence. What? There are some that say that Australian rules football was based on an indigenous game, Man Hook. So what? That's completely irrelevant. But Sydney is a spiritual heartland of rugby league. Queensland would argue with that. Who cares about Queensland? <laughs> I mean, that's it, you know it. And anyway, rugby league, it's harsh, it's brash, it's in your face, and sometimes it's absolutely brutal, and it's quite a lot like it. I'll take your hand off it. Well, how do you explain the strong links between rugby league and the Indigenous community? That's a recent thing. Look, even if I believed your theory, 
which I don't, where would you have found a park with sufficient grass cleared of trees to play a game of rugby league prior to 1788? Stand aside, little man. I've got words from the very time. Mm. Between Sydney Cove and Botany Bay, we met with in many parts of fine black soil, luxuriantly covered with grass, and the trees had thirty or forty yards distance from each other. The little little harbour, referring to Tungabi, which we of land free from timber and very fit for cultivation without waiting for its being clear the wood for the trees stand very wide at each other and how the wood short the woods on the spot that we are speaking of resemble Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you made your point. There was plenty of grassy parkland around here prior to 1788. Thank you. Despite your smug assertion that I'm a brainless bogan, I actually know my stuff. But of course, rugby league wasn't an indigenous game. For the first 50 years of the Sydney competition, there were hardly any indigenous players at all. They were segregated from the game and from Sydney society. It's yeah. a bit of a shit, that. Anyway, we've got to get going. Let's get in my convenient for plot development time travel device. This <laughs> <laughs> Arcadian plantation, rich in fun and wallaby, all will come to transmutation. Never again the same to be There's a cold, cold change arriving With a massive southerly There's a cold, cold change arriving Of the likes we've never seen Eleven vessels up the south coast Full of poxy men and cows Sails a billow with a southerly There's no use complaining now There's a cold, cold change arriving With a massive southerly There's a cold, cold change arriving Of the likes we've never seen Where are we now? Uh, looks like 27th of January, 1788. Huh. The first fleet will just now be arriving at what will be called Sydney Cove. And Philip doesn't look particularly concerned about it. Well, that over there. Oh. No, don't look. No, no. Shit, no, no, no. Well, the male and... The female convicts, they're, uh, commingling. No, they're rude and you don't. If I, can just butt in here. <laughs> if I can just butt in here for a minute, modern historians now dispute whether this so-called orgy when the first fleet arrived actually happened. Right. <laughs> Look over there, there's Captain Phil. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a bit preoccupied. Probably trying to figure out what he's going to call the place. Arthur Philip named this city Honouring an English baron Who appointed him as governor As a method to repay him A transaction still in practice right up to this day 
Arthur Phillip named this city on a ring an English baron, but his name is a corruption of the virtuous Saint Denny, once a bishop of old Parry. That's until he misplaced his head when he was decapitated. It might therefore be more fitting to rename this city Holy Headless Dennis Town. <laughs> Metropolitan and sprawling, cosmopolitan in makeup, multicolored even more than Neapolitan the ice cream in a basin where the melting pot's been left to soak. What? It's a place chock full of icons, many are found in the kitchen. People call it steak and kidney, comes to mind whenever I see a coat hanger next to bowls put in a dish rack left to dry. <laughs> so please tell me where else can you take a cab to Cabarita, eat a hen and chicken bagel, then high five a duck in five dock around five o'clock. Please tell me where else can you bust a bird with your baby, take a punt at the TAB, take another punt to Putney, ride to ride and ride on me too. It doesn't paramatter, you're in Greater Sydney Town. <laughs> Sydney's named after a beheaded Parisian bishop. It's true. The English named their Emerald City after a Frenchman and a Catholic. I find that hard to believe. It's true. St. Denny is one of the most famous cephalophores of Christian legend. <laughs> Cephalophore means head carrier. You can't just say you ask that. The story goes... The story goes that he picked up his head and walked several miles Preaching a sermon on repentance. <laughs> Fascinating. Anyway, we've got about 250 years to make up. Let's get back in this car here. <laughs> well, the sun you when you're walking in the quarry. They'll stone you and won't even say they're sorry They'll stone you at the Argyle in the rocks And they'll stone you at the manly ferry docks But I would not feel so all alone Everybody must get stoned Well, here we are, 1855, in a quarry at Piermont. Bloody sandstone everywhere. This beautiful stone, known as Yellow Block, was used to construct early Sydney. Make it sound like they were making jewellery, mate. This was hard work. But the stonework was exquisite. And this stonework that was made so exquisitely was made by convict unionists. They negotiated for the first eight-hour working day way back in 1855. Yay! 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 <laughs> Take a stroll down George Street, you Philistine bastards. Laugh at the town hall and be flabbergasted. How those pilgrims transported for sedition or for forging transform the yellow block into something royally George. Known as yellow gold, the old Hawkesbury sandstone. It's up on the escarpment, forming the lip of the basin. Deposited in the Triassic when the creatures were colossal. But what is its lithology? Sedimentary, my dear fossil. Take a stroll down George Street, you Philistine bastards. Look up at the QBB and be flabbergasted. How those miscreants transported for sedition or for forging transform the yellow block into something royally Georgian. The convicts hew this yellow gold at the Piedmont quarry. They were skilled and organised, but they had to worry about inhaling the airborne particulars, which gave them doses of bronchitis or maybe. Take a stroll around Hyde Park, you Philistine bastards. Look up at the museum, 
Addition of forging Tracks one they are blocking to Bedrock upon which this whole town is based A symbol of extravagant, sophisticated taste So much more stately than brick That is without a doubt So when you're told that Sydney rocks You'll know what they're on about Take a stroll down Pine Street You feel a stone bastard Look up at the end You can't be appalled Because the bastards have knocked the place down Shame. It's a bloody Shame. disgrace Shame. 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 And they also knocked down the awesome Australia Hotel in Martin Place. Doesn't it made a sandstone, mate. Stick to the top. I don't care. Sarah Bernhardt performed there at the opening. Who even is Sarah Bernhardt? <laughs> Excuse me? I'm talking to you later. <laughs> anyway, there was a gold rush out of Bathurst and Helene around this time. Oh, well, I'm quite partial to some Cartier gold jewellery. Of course you are, you bloody metrosexual. Your idea of stylish is a flanny with gold embroidery. And what's wrong with it? <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the gold rush didn't clear out Sydney like it did Melbourne, and this is down to topography. The Blue Mountains, specifically. Despite that, New South Wales had all of the ingredients of a classic gold rush. Yep, class struggle, xenophobia, rioting and poverty. It was 1851 in Bathurst town Hargrave digs a hole and he looks down There is gold in that there creek bed And although they plead with him To commit to non-disclosure you can bet Those agreements haven't been established yet It's the promise of a fortune The lure of our sheep up High returns on your investment back Hold on some chunks of luck then the rest of primal savages Decorum's thrown away See them in the stock exchange Still at it to this day As we travel out from Sydney on the way To the central tablelands there is a range They don't call it great dividing For nothing you might think That you can train it there but don't forget the rail line hasn't been constructed yet As we travel along the Great Western Road yeah. Down the perilous Victoria Pass we go In a horse-drawn carriage It takes about five days In total to get there But don't forget The motor car hasn't been invented yet It's the promise of the fortune The lure of our cheap buck High returns on your investment back laws and chance to luck Men regress to primal savages and quorums thrown away See them in the stock exchange still added to this day It's now 1862 at Apple End And the Anglos are too keen on China men Racist bastards Who worked harder and worked cleaner so they go and start a riot over white Australian values. Don't forget that that policy hadn't been adopted yet. It's now 1872 and holds a man. Finds a 3,000 ounce oh, nugget at oh, Hill End. <laughs> we all go berserk and head there, digging frantically we find that it isn't that much fun there. Don't forget your for chronic apples and Bobby have been invented yet. <laughs> it's the promise of a fortune, the lure of our sheep up. High returns on your investment, back log on some chance you luck. Then progress to primal savages, the quorum's thrown away. See them in the stock exchange, still add it to this day. And although there's no pickaxes, now there's no time to relax. Cause instead of seeking sacks of gold, they're dealing Goldman Sachs. <laughs> Alright, as far as this has been, we've got to get out of here. Yeah.
of this disaster zone. <coughs> Small wonder vermin round the world here choose to make their Convicts got off squalid ships, built inadequate housing, and lived in squalor. Planning never was. Sydney's strong suit. Yeah. Sydney had world-class poverty back in the 19th century. Sydney always punches above her weight. Did you know that in the ni in, in 1900, actually, Sydney had the bubonic plague? Really? Yeah, like 100 people died and they knocked down a bunch of <coughs> thousands as a result. Oh, you got to admit that that was a blessing in disguise. Well, I don't know. How do you make that? Oh, it was the start of the gentrification of Sydney. <laughs> Chardonnay sipping snow. Can we get out of here? Yeah, it's a bit stinky. People play such foolish games. People play such foolish games. People play. Stop in the year 2000 because we couldn't do a show about Sydney without mentioning what Juan Antonio Samurai called the best Olympic Games ever! So you've mentioned it, now let's go. <laughs> so much for Olympic Games, so much for Olympic Games, so much for. That harbour. Spectacular views to die for. Access restricted to the rich, Billy. Did Captain Philip, when he passed Point Piper, when he first set eyes on this natural harbour, see unprecedented investor potential with massive returns for those with freehold title and say damn and bugger the topography if i can't build on it the land here is worth jack to me point piper palaces and seaforth fortresses castle crag castles Double bay duplexes, Hunter's Hill Havens, Massive Mossman's Mansions, Cockatoo Island, the Carnarvonians. This landscape is not the thing we're here to see. When will you realise the structures of the scenery? Promontory surveying the sea from some rocky outcrop in a singular bungalow. Look out atop in my water view villa. I'm a bon vivant singing with Billy as we cover the waterfront. Also, my house must have blue water harbour to see from every vantage point. I demand my on 
sweet Let's be taking the views While I'm taking a dump Offer anything less And I'll tell you go jump From Cremon Point I'll see Kira Lee And I'll strain at the Prime Minister As he stares back at me Hey Albo Construct his chalet and then settling in and deciding to stay. After he'd weighed up the pros and the cons, he would not have found it then frigates in the Solomons. You gotta admit that it is a magnificent harbour. Yeah, with access restricted for fat cats with boats, Billy. Still, I think more than a few sailors would prefer to remain here rather than venture out into the high seas of the Tasman. There we go. <laughs> Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea. The harbour's where the treasure be. Adventures through the heads into the high, high seas is beyond our endeavours. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea, the harbour's where the treasure be. The weather Tom ugly, the swell is immense, what would be the door's point? Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea, the harbour's where the treasure be. A pinch drop. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea, the harbour's where the treasure be. The young seasick person is lavender bay, or some colour in between. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea, the harbour's where the treasure be. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea, the harbour's where the treasure be. But to your clipper to the service bay, and put it into neutral. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea, the harbour's where the treasure be. The Shire is a war and or a bridge too far. We're all wool aware of that. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea. The harbour's where the treasure be. Yeah, we the ships hold us to broken bays. It's gonna matter someday. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea. The harbour's where the treasure be. The secret to your darling harbour is unlocked with the circular key. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea. The harbour's where the treasure be. The captain with one leg claims he lost it when he fought. Denizens of the deep. Boys, drop the mainsail, farewell the sea. The harbour's where the treasure be. Right. Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking first stop, National Folk Festival. Second stop, Redfern Shanty Club. Uh, it's not really my scene, mate. What? Well, you've at least got to admit that this city has something for everybody. I just keep thinking you're putting a really positive spin on things. Because if Sydney were anthropomorphized, she'd be a middle-aged woman, say in her 50s, and she'd have multiple health problems. Oh. She's overweight, she's got blood pre her blood pressure's up, she's got ugly growths all over her skin, and she's hanging out with this bad crowd. Oh, boy, you're right. <laughs> This sparkling city displayed symptoms of sluggishness feeling run down. Big city malady, transport authority diagnosed of 
obstructed corridor. So the Aramis prescribed an invasive <laughs> procedure deep underground, which they administered. West Kennet's enemas taken as tall as the price you pay. Poorly built, gaudy constructions are popping up all over town. Enhanced Botox, bare-faced apartment blocks for hapless tenants to occupy Who, when cracks appear, have to evacuate Fearing it's gonna fall down Run to their foundations, these accommodations need more than Suffering as her bright floral somewhere to hang out skirts are being burned to a dark shade of brown. Taking our smoke is rife, so much for quick for life, bad habits in a wrong habitat. There's so much. <laughs> There's so much about Sydney, I just can't stand. Well, you just want to point out the bad bits. Like this. Russell, give me a B. <laughs> the traffic is horrible. The tolls highway robbery. The North Shore's flush with snobbery. The air is toxic, the river's dioxic, the legislators are drop kicks. Viruses are resistant, cockroaches persistent, sharks not that distant, town planning non-existent. The suburbs sprawl, the Westies tall, the shop jocks fall, footballers are poor, and the NRL does bugger all. Hey. Nice place to visit, says it all. Public transport sucks, felons run amok from John MacArthur on. It's been a steady stream of shysters, thugs and racketeers. John MacArthur, John MacArthur, John MacArthur, John MacArthur and the Rum Corps took down the governor. John MacArthur don't float my boat, but they stuck his mug on the two dollar note. John MacArthur shot an officer, owned half the colony. You follow me? It continues all the way through to that Dame Nielsen, Juanita. I'd like to meet her. The chief disappeared, we hold grave fears that a man of spice, Saffron Abe, who ain't no babe, hired her assassin and some dodgy cops. Was the state involved? Well, who's asking? Whoa! Who ran the play? Whoa! And for those who say it ain't that shitty anymore, the city's clean these days, I say to you one word, Baragaru. Look, I, I hate rap. <laughs> well, if you hate rap and you hate this city, why don't you just bugger off then? Oh. <laughs> Sydney's a cesspool of humanity where I can hide. <laughs> what are you running from? It's a very interesting story. Does it go something like this? It was late in the month of October At a mine site out at Cobra The cicadas were just about to let rip She was driving a front-end loader When she ran somebody over She thought the better of informing Her on-site supervisor of her slip she completed the site induction, followed the work instruction. 
she didn't quite know what she had done wrong. She had mastered the driving basics, had scored low on her risk matrix. The hazard of collision with a pedestrian who happened to come along. Knowing she stood out like a loner In her high vis and her loader She ditched the fluoro and the big machine She hot-wired the company you Hit the pedal with her work boots And although she hadn't showered She was hoping that her getaway was clean Drove eastward through Dominion, took a left and on to Warren. She liked the Oxley Highway and its vibe. From there she sped on to Gilganda, down the castle way to Merriwa, flying along part of the world's largest virtual solar system drive. Took a sharp left at the New England Hardly slowing down at Singleton Right in the Golden Highway thoroughfare She pressed on to Mara Rundi A name which means five fingers In the language of the Wanarua people Who once congregated there not knowing if it's minutes or hours, she preceded her pursuers. She undertook to throw them off the scent. The chappy dam up to Nundle, she traversed in an empty canoe. And on an unlocked bicycle, to the country music capital she went. So now with her escape and her killing, is she heroine or villain? I'll leave it to your judgment to decide. No, back to the Peel River, where the big hats keep getting bigger. She found that no one could suspect a manslaughter or a misdescent. Of such wholesome tiny witness, so there she could most confidently hide. That is a real interesting story, but it finishes in Tamworth. How did you end up in Sydney? All right. Well, apparently I look quite a lot like Tammy Wynette. <laughs> Go figure. And if I'd stayed in Tamworth much longer, people just kept confusing me with her. So I fled to Sydney, where there's a way lower concentration of country music fans. <laughs> the story's just bulletproof. Wow. How did you end up here? Me? Oh, well, I've been all over the world, but Sydney, despite all of her problems, just keeps calling me home. <laughs> Strangely enough, I think I kind of know how this one goes. <laughs> when he landed mascot at 6 a.m., the taxi rank is still empty. His plane is a thundering wake up call for the good people of Tempe. <laughs> he takes the taxi to Kunji Beach and fixes his game. Drinks four double shot espressos as jet lag medication. Attending the full body massage rooms, just up from one night junction, serves as the application of his own self prescribed dungeon. Tamarama 2026, the football stadium hole in the ground where he seeks out entertainment 
has his insurance mob's name till next week when they'll call it something different. <laughs> he had hoped to see a few big puffy blokes give each other a cuddle <laughs> under the guise of brutality <coughs> in some overhyped struggle. And then he strides down Oxford Street, which seems to be a different jurisdiction where you can strut in your sequence suit if that's your predilection. Surrey Hills 2010, Paddington 2021, Woolamaloo 2011. <laughs> he wages a bid at the Crown Casino, he walks home counting his losses. Rides the crowded rail to roads and goes looking for the Colossus. Which, alas, he does not find, but he finds himself in Ikea. <laughs> Another bewildering monolith. I guess that's the general idea. <laughs> roads is a high rise metropolis, so clean it's hard to imagine. It's where Union Carbide formerly manufactured Agent Orange. Roads 2138. 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 Roads. Roads. Having harbored a hankering to ride on a bike on an icon, he pedals to the middle of that famous bridge and looks toward the horizon. Yes, in part she is exquisite as a paradise of Milton, but with some repulsive tendencies, a bit like Paris Hilton. Yes, she's loud and brash and impersonal, but beautiful, it's a pity that he can't bring himself to think of her as just another big city. I can kind of get where you're coming from with this, but the more I hear from you, the more I realise we are total polar opposites. Yeah, yeah. It's a wonder we haven't clawed one another's eyes out already. Maybe it's best we spend more time with each other. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I completely agree, so, uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, on the town hall steps. I've been here so many times in my formative years. Going to the cinemas down George Street, bushwhacker dances, Palm Sunday peace marches, go to bondage parties. <laughs> 
Hey. What are you doing? Hey. Yeah. Hey. I'm running for a Tinder date. Oh, me too. It's like I've been stood up. <laughs> me too. <laughs> you don't like Johnny Cash. Well, I like that Nine Inch Nails song he does. <laughs> and the Nick Cave one. What about you? Surely you don't like doing the time war. Oh yeah, it's my favourite song for blind dancing. Cool. <laughs> you know, this is reminding me of the Pina Colada song. Do you like Pina Coladas? Uh, uh, Clark. <laughs> oh, no, not that one. Anything. No, Clark. Oh. Clark, no. I'm sorry. Oh. It's got nothing to do with Sydney, mate. Yeah, no. But, uh, what are we going to sing? I don't know. I think I got something. Your Bellevue Hill. I'm Wentworthville. How can we bridge the wide harbour between us? You are St. Ives, I am St. Mary's. But I think we can make this thing work. Your Parramatta Road, I'm North Connect. How can we bridge the wide harbour between us? Your Brighton Lasanne. I'm Bondi Beach, but I think we can make this thing work. You are Barangaroo, I'm Rudy Hill RSL. How can we reach the wide harbour between us? You are the Opera House, I'm Breezeby Workers Club, but I think we can make this thing work. Steak and kidney, I'm pale and quinoa. How can we reach the wide harbour between us? Your meat and revenge, I'm paleo, but I think we can make this thing work. But hang on, you're Tony Jones, I'm Alan Jones. How can we reach the wide harbour between us? I am Mark Latham. <laughs> Your Bullens Animal World. I am Taronga. How can we reach the wide harbour between us? Your manly fun kid. I'm Luna Park. But I think we can make this thing work. I'm Taramara. How can we bridge the wide harbour between us? You're Cabramatta. I'm Tamarama. But I think we can make this thing work.